so this weekend god damn it i we have to do this story and i don't want let's let's start let's get the intro going here you go have some catnip each week Catherine, radio dead air audience go out worldwide interwebs find all sorts of horrible stuff bring it back here for a little segment we like to call what the fuck is wrong with you and uh, everyone in this net in their first story is awful every except the fast food workers oh yeah everyone is ever everyone needs to be ashamed of themselves we talked i talked about this at the start of the show but we actually have the story here and this was covered by the guardian which if the guardian has to cover your shit because this wasn't a thing in the UK. No. So <laughs> this made enough noise to cross the fucking ocean. A McDonald's public relations stunt has ended in chaos and acrimony. After the fast food chain promised, promised fans of the TV show Rick and Morty a limited edition, long out of production, Szechuan dipping sauce, and swiftly ran out. Police were called to at least one af outlet after people in queues for the sauce began getting angry and chanting, we want sauce. 1,000 plus people were camped out. Fans of Rick and Morty, a hugely popular U.S. science fiction cartoon show that riffs off the, back to the, uh, the, the, riffs off the Back to the Future films, Descended on McDonald's restaurants in cities across the U.S. on Saturday after the chain announced it would uh, be selling a limited run of the long out of production Szechuan dipping sauce that is referenced in the show's third season. However, things turned sour when fans, according to reports, had queued up for hours in some places, were told there was no more sauce. Now, I, I want to add my own experience with this. On, on Saturday here in Charleston, uh, I went out. There was one store that had the Szechuan sauce in the entirety of Charleston. One store for a city of about a million people. And that store received 60 packets. Six, zero. One I heard stores that only had like 10. Some stores only had like 20, 10, yeah. One store, here's, here's, when I walked in the door, I already knew there was going to be a problem. Because I was like, you know what, I got to run errands today, I got to go to Home Depot, I'll stop by and maybe pick some up. Because yeah. here was me thinking this was going to be like, like a shamrock shake thing, you yeah. know? Like you'd go in for one day only, you'd only get this, and you'd grab, a, grab like a green milkshake, and you know, you're, but you know. The store was packed wall to wall with people. And I look around and everybody's holding little fry packets. You know, the, the little small packets, yeah. size fry. Everyone's holding fry packets with numbers sharpied onto them. So that's how I already knew this was going to be a shit show. That told me what McDonald's corporate did was, here's the shit, deal with it, bye. Yeah. We're, we're, we're not and helping. from the numbers... From the low quantity, there's a part of me that feels like they've had a box somewhere since 1998. No, no, actually, these were actually made up special, and that that's the next okay. part of this. They okay. had little special. So it wasn't like some expired shit they they found no. at the warehouse. No. no, they actually had okay. special Rick and Morty artwork. Except there's the next stupid part. It wasn't. Adult yeah. Swim was not partnered with mcdonald's rick and morty was not partnering with mcdonald's just did this of their own accord so they drew like this knockoff rick and morty type artwork on it and called it limited edition posters and shit they obviously they wanted it both ways they wanted to have the association with rick and morty without right. having the legal so that was the first problem mcdonald's corporate pretty much put their entire staff to the wolves and that's fucking terrible. And then the second... the people that suffered. Now, here's what I did when I walked in. 
and I saw everybody and I saw the tickets. How many do they have? They only have 60 and they've passed out all the tickets. Here's what I, I did what anyone was supposed to do. Well, that sucks. Okay, I'm going to go to Home Depot. Bye. You mean you didn't jump on the counter and pull your shirt over your head and start yelling? No, I didn't. But that's apparently what these people were doing. Yell, they, they, uh, just look at this stupid shit. Holding up signs to protest to the staff. Motherfuckers, the staff has no control over this no. shit. Those people are making minimum fucking wage. They had nothing to do with it. They hate this as much as you, if not more. Yes. Because now they're stuck there with a bunch of fucking crazy motherfuckers yelling at them. They had to call the fucking police. Yeah, they had to call in fucking riot cops in a few locations. Yes. And the thing to me is, like, we talked about this on Twitter today. Like, I get collectible collectibles. Mm -hmm. I got my little shelf funkos here. I like stuff. I'm a super fan of a few things, like that X file. Like when Julian Anderson walked into that X Files panel, I squealed. But, like, what? I can't see getting like this. Like. The Funko booth at New York Comic Con had an had a line like a line for a fucking Disney ride, like you'd be an hour and a half in this line, and it, the booth is an enclosed store, so you don't even know what they have. You might stand in that line and not even get what you want. Yeah, because they might not have it, but you stand in the line just on the hope. And I'm like, fuck that. The ones I want, like I was looking for a Dale Cooper, I didn't find it. I'll find it somewhere else. I'm not gonna die. I got a Ginny Weasley. That was very exciting. I don't understand getting like this over. I mean, it's a little pack of sauce. Yeah. That's mostly fucking sugar. And like, like it's McDonald's. Let's be honest. I eat McDonald's, but let's be honest. It's shitty food. Like that but, sauce is probably 60% corn syrup anyway. I, I get the, I, cause you know, people say, well, well, you say it's just sauce, but you know, like a limited edition poster is just paper. Why don't you just print one at home? Because it's a limited edition poster. And it's yeah. like, it's and the like, moment where you said, Lost, I was Lost there. to do the between season ARGs, they had a whole thing where they were in major cities handing out candy bars. They mm -hmm. were handing out Apollo bars. And I tried to get one and I couldn't. And that sucked. But it's not but the I end of the die. fucking world. Right. Like, I, I didn't die and I didn't freak the fuck out on anybody. I just went on with my damn life. I mean, yeah. You're, you're just... You're making us look like goddamn imbeciles. I went. I couldn't get it. I was like, okay. I don't like get in there and go, what? No sauce. What will I have a dumb dumb motherfucker? I want my fucking time. No. You don't get things sometimes. Sometimes you don't get things. No, you don't. You don't get the thing. That's what happens. Now, I, and but, Life is hard. I will point out, McDonald's really fucked the dog on this. They did. I mean, they either grossly underestimated this fan base or just didn't do their research and care. But I feel like if they had enough noise made at them to do the promotion at all, they should have understood what they were getting into. They should have understood what they were getting their employees into. Right. Like, if, if enough noise was made about this to make them go, hey, this would be a good promotion then that means there's enough interest that you actually do it correctly. I said, I said this at the top of the show. I'm going to say it again right now. If you go to McDonald's this week, you know, for anything, you better be super nice. Yeah. Just, and it's not just the, this is another frustrating thing that McDonald's did to their stores. It wasn't all the stores that were participating. Right. Just certain stores got the Szechuan sauce. This was a like a whole day thing for their buttermilk tenders promotion and other places got other sauces, but they didn't communicate that very well. So pretty much every fucking McDonald's had to deal with this shit. So if you go to McDonald's this week, you'd be super nice. You'd be yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Yes, sir. No, sir. You say please and thank you. You, you say have a nice day before they say have a nice day. If they get your order wrong at the drive through let it deal with just okay sometimes that shit happens just deal let do not be a motherfucker because 
McDonald's corporate put and them And then through. go ahead and carry that forward into the rest of your life because they're working a very difficult job for no money. Yes. And that job sucks. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and don't be a dick all the time. Yes. Yes. Oh, all right. We have... Oh, great. Oh, okay. fuck. Okay. Oh, okay. This... Come here. Oh, come here. Okay. Bye. Oh, we have bad ideas this week. We have... Uh, oh... Do you remember any of your social studies teachers when you were growing up? Yes. I, we I remember with the tragic coma over that would call you a mental Sahara if you got a question wrong. Okay. I, I remember mine a bit differently. I, ha I generally have a good estimation of my social studies teacher. One of the, one of my, mine in high school, she got me into, uh, into debate. I was, she was very nice. I liked her. I have a high estimation of them. I don't, I, 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 I'm now I'm sitting back and going, were they that good or have they gotten worse? And here's why. Parents shocked over Nazi mascot assignment. Oh no. Gwinnett County, Georgia. Jamie Brown said he was first shocked and dismayed. That quickly turned to disappointment Monday when he saw his sixth graders social studies homework assignment. Uh, a Shiloh Middle School social studies teacher, teacher assigned this task to the students. Quote, the year is 1935, and you have been tasked with creating a mascot to represent the Nazi party at its political rallies. Think of all the information you have learned about Hitler and the Nazi party. You will create a colorful illustration of the mascot. Give the mascot a name. You will also write an explanation as to why this mascot was chosen to represent the Nazi party. I guarantee you at least one kid brought on a picture of Pepe and tried to get away with it. Because their dad has it on a t-shirt. Sixth grade. Yeah, that's that's about the right age for that. I, I just... How could you... Uh, You're a social studies teacher, right? That means you should be aware of what's going on in the nation around you. Generally, you would like to think, yeah. So this seems like a very bad moment in time. To do, and and uh, the, the school district made it quite clear in the statement whatnot, this was not part of the approved curriculum. <laughs> I feel like any time you're doing the, let's try to think like Nazis as a lesson, you're fucking it up. But now, yeah, when we have actual fucking Nazis, when people are offended by a video game making its slogan, make America Nazi free again, because that's somehow offensive now. Like, it used to be Nazis were the universal, like, that was the one group you could safely malign and nobody would get offended by it now somehow we're defending nazis maybe this is a bad idea like i understand the point of look at the other point of view that's a great lesson and we should all try to do that more but, but maybe we don't teach that with nazis yeah it's it's because the i mean on one side there's um we would all like to live and on the other side we would like some of you not to live yeah yeah at all that's not so much a point of view as being horrible mm. yeah just it <sighs> were, were teachers different or had people just gotten stupider or i i didn't have jobs like this assignments like this no no we we were we were pretty clearly taught that nazis are bad you should not want to be like them they did terrible things uh and there are different ways you could do this like if you're trying to do the see it from another point of view there are other ways you could do that and not... Also, I feel like mascots are supposed to be a fun thing. Yeah! 
so when you're talking about something as horrible as the Holocaust, maybe going, create a fun cartoon character to promote this. No! No. 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 For sake. Oh, well, moving on to other things. It is mm. that time of year again. Everything is pumpkin spice now. Yeah. I don't care. I fucking love pumpkin spice everything, and all y'all can fuck off. You can call me a basic white bitch if you want. I don't fucking care. Everything is pumpkin and apple, and I am here for it. Well, if you were in Baltimore this past weekend, um, you were not there for it um because the building was evacuated oh pumpkin spice air freshener causes school evacuation <laughs> wow the Chris uh Christo Ray Jesuit High School uh in Baltimore was evacuated Thursday afternoon after a possible hazardous substance was found on the third floor uh Two students and three adults were transported as precaution. One of the adults was transported for an unrelated reason. Um, a pumpkin spice air freshener, the flavor and fragrance made up of cinnamon, nutmeg, ginger, and a little cloves, forced teachers and students to evacuate. Okay. <laughs> So people smelled something. They couldn't identify what it was. And they evacuated the building. I mean, there are people that are very sensitive to smells. Like, I know people that can't even walk into a fucking Yankee Candle. Uh, that's yeah. fair enough. But, like, this is a time when it'd be good to have Dan around. Dan's not home tonight. <laughs> Because he could tell me if there are any poison gases or chemical weapons that smell like cinnamon and cloves. <laughs> That's to why it's a good... There are, but he, for all I know, he could be like, oh yeah, this one, it's horrible. It makes your spine liquefy. <laughs> He's, he but, has a uh, niche. He does have that niche. He yes. does, and it's horrifying. Yeah. But, my God, okay. Okay. Up, up, I mean, I get erring on the side of caution, but I feel like as a society, we've become a bit reactionary. A little bit. We've become a bit, oh, wait, they're texting me. There are not any poisonous gases that he's watching <laughs> from where he is. <laughs> so just so you guys know, there are no poisonous gases that smell like pumpkin spice. So if you smell pumpkin spice, you are safe. Your spine is not about to lick the butt. I wonder if there was someone in the building going, you guys, this is, it's, this you don't know. Not, it's fine. It's fine, guys. It's not. No, what is that? That smell. It smells like, it smells like, guys, it's, it's fine. It's white people smell. No, guys. <laughs> Maybe that was the problem. <laughs> I mean, after the Freddie Gray thing, I can see people being a little terrible <laughs> about white people in Baltimore. So maybe that was the problem. Maybe we're like, holy, holy shit! It smells like white bitches in here. You know? <laughs> and it might be a little hard to blame them about that, you know? Um, like, but you evacuate the entire school. I, I just, I'm just imagining the firefighters going, Jesus Christ! Did we have anything else to do today? Yeah, some guy got his dick stuck in a. Pipe. No, okay, well, yeah, let's evacuate the school. Sure, no problem. My high school did get evacuated once for a chemical spill. What? Somebody in the photography darkroom spilled, I forget what, fixer or something. Mm. And because it's a closed area, um, there was a fume problem, and they evacuated the whole school, and we all sat outside for like three hours, and the fire department came, and my dad was in the fire department, so they all knew me, and they said, hi, Tara. And then my chemistry teacher saved the day because he had the proper base to neutralize the acid. So the fire department ended up not even really being necessary because the chemistry teacher saved the day. And then we went back inside. <laughs> and the local ice cream truck happened to drive by. They made a fucking killing. Because <laughs> like a thousand kids 
ran out to buy ice cream because we were just sitting on the fucking lawn like uh, just been... this might be a really long youtube video this week unless you cut some of my bullshit <laughs> this week tara talks for an hour oh uh, all right so next i I'm sure cops have heard every excuse for driving drunk, every single one, or or for just for public intoxication of any kind. Cops have heard it all. Uh, this is a new one, I think. I and I props for creativity. This came out of Wyoming this week. Arrested drunk man claims he traveled, time traveled to warn of aliens. Oh, my God. Police say a central Wyoming man they arrested for public intoxication claimed he traveled back in time to warn of an alien invasion. KTWOAM in Casper reports the man told police he wanted to warn the people of Casper that aliens will arrive next year and they should leave as soon as possible. He asked to speak to the president of the town, about 170 miles northwest of Cheyenne. The man told police... He was only able to time travel because aliens filled his body with alcohol. He noted he was supposed to be transported to the year 2018, not this year. So that I that's happened to me before. I've that, that's <laughs> Don't you fucking hate it when that happens? I hate that, you know. When you have just like one shot too many and you go to the wrong fucking year. Yeah. Yeah. I also props to this website because they go all out on this. This, an artist's conception of a wormhole. <laughs> the sort of the thing a drunk man would need to travel back in time. And formative. artist's conception of an alien spacecraft shooting what might be a death ray. The sort of thing that could be happening in 2018 if a drunk man in Casper is to be believed. So you, some, some low level news staffer had a really good time at work that day. He was like, you know what? I get this story. Fuck it. Fuck it. I'm going to justify the budget for photography. <clears throat> I mean, how stupid are they going to feel when the aliens land next year? <laughs> oh, how stupid do we feel now? That we didn't we didn't listen to the time traveler who tried to warn us about the large age of like and we didn't shut it off when a bird <laughs> dropped a piece of bread into a fan that shut down the large hadron collider. We didn't take that as a sign from the universe. And now look at us. We live in a fucking dystopia. Look at the bottom. Look at the bottom of the story. There's a web pole. Oh. Web pole. How do you feel about the possible invasion of Earth by space aliens in 2018? Begin implementation of extensive planetary defense immediately. Resistance is futile. I wish they'd hurry up and get here. I think they're already here. That would explain everything. Will they bring pie? As long as they wait until after the Super Bowl, I'm good with it. Dean Winchester wrote this poll. This pie. This... What kind of pie do they have in space anyway? You don't even know if you like that pie. <laughs> I, you know what? Bless their hearts. The fucking web outlet for for God damn it. That that they're just well, like. So I voted. I voted for. I think they're already here. That would explain everything. Because come on. I I voted. That for... is the current leader at forty two percent. I did. I wish they'd hurry up and get here. That's 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 <clears> in sixteen percent. That's in third place. Will they bring pie? Is it 19%? <laughs> oh, God damn it. So, Ireland next. Oh. And this is something uh, that was gone before my time, but uh, I actually remember it from a lot of cartoons. Um, some people at, at watching right now have no conception of this. Once upon a time, before the advent of refrigeration, uh, if you wanted milk, someone in a truck would drive to your house every morning and deliver milk. I've told you guys about my mom's one-armed milkman. Yes. 
this 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 is a this is something that apparently I thought had gone away entirely. But it apparently hasn't? Oh, not I guess it hasn't. Apparently not in Ireland. They still do I did this. not know this. Um they do this and they do it badly. Bored milkmen egg houses on their rounds for three months. Oh no. As special operation mounted to find the culprits. Three bored milkmen who were egging houses on their milk rounds for nearly three months were caught after a uh, how did, how did they say that? Gardai? Garda. Garda. Which Set, is why I always laugh at the armored trucks that say Garda on the side. Yeah. Set up a special operation to find the culprits. Paul Keating, 32, and Eric Flynn, 19, were surrounded by open cartons of eggs. Gardai stopped in the early hours of one morning. Shane Greenlaw, uh, Greenhall? I, probably Greenhall. Greenhall. Uh, Green 19 was not with them at the time, but he later came forward admitting his part of the eggings. The men targeted one house in particular, did not realize the impact their uh, behavior was having on the retired lady living there, who was in considerable fear. They have since paid more than 2,000 euros for the damage they caused, mostly to cars parked outside the houses. I, I, Where was this? Mm. Uh, Clonsilla? Okay, I don't think I know where that is. Yeah, but I I just let's let's stop for a second. Your job is the milkman. Okay, fine. And they also delivered eggs too, because again, pre refrigeration. You know, apparently they still do this. Only this is not how you deliver them. For one thing. Also, did you not think someone would wonder where all the fucking eggs you were supposed to deliver were going? Oh, these were like... Oh, it's a suburb of Dublin. Okay. Okay. So they were like... Stock? Like this was inventory? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that was going to get noticed. Yeah, if... if if you take all the shit that you're supposed to deliver to people who have paid for it, and instead you throw it at an old lady's house, that's going to get some notice. Yeah. They... Yeah. Someone, someone are going to notice that the eggs are not actually arriving. And also, I love how the and that, the, egg, that the, the number of eggs not arriving seemed to correlate with the number of eggs hitting this poor old lady's house. Why were they targeting this lady? They said bored. They were. They, I have never been that bored in my life. Okay. No. I I I, may, I don't know if there's something wrong with me, but I have never been bored enough to go. Hey, let's go fuck with someone else's house. This I don't sounds... get the egging thing because eggs are delicious. And why waste them that way? Like, you could make an omelet out of them. Or you could make somebody's house sticky. The omelet really seems like the better option. And the, the next part of this that, that is just baffling to me is the cops set up a three-month sting. It took them three months to figure this one out? I, I'm of the opinion was they were like, we've got some really shitty cops. We don't know what to do with them. Let's just stick them on this and <laughs> and, and say we're doing... Oh, wait, they solved it? Holy shit. You know, even if they fuck it up, probably no one's going to get hurt or die. <laughs> you got like the, the, you know, the chief's nephew <laughs> who's just on the force, but he sucks. Like, you know, you're Danny from Hot Fuzz. Hey, just, that worked just, me. Worst that can happen is someone's house gets egged again. Oh. Do they? Do, I I'm I'm pretty sure you and your family over there that you don't have milk delivery anymore. I don't think so. I mean, I have I have cousins that live in Dublin. Yeah, but um, Dublin's a big city. Yeah, well, this is a suburb of Dublin. Well, even still, it's um, a suburb of yeah. a big city. 
I didn't think they did. Like, I, not that I know of, but maybe. That's so weird. I mean, I, I also have cousins that live in my dad's hometown of Bally Bunyan, which is a town that pretty much shuts down for the winter. Unless, like, if, you, you know, half the businesses just close down and people go where it's warmer. Like, so maybe there. I don't know. But it's not something we really have discussed. My last one this week is how how many times has Dove been on this show? Has what? Dove. Oh yeah. This is they I try so hard and they just can't stop fucking up. I I think I I, I is this the the like the third or fourth time that Dove has been on because I know we've had this so, shit on the show and you think they would have hired somebody to cover this shit for them by now? Yeah. Uh. I, 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 the new story doesn't have a perfect picture of it. I need, I need one that that demonstrates what happens. Yeah, here's the per. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Um, so Dove took out a new ad for uh, one of their cleansing products. Cleansing products. Mm-hmm. And uh, this is what happened. Dove apologizes for ad showing black woman turning into a white one. Yeah. Dove has apologized after publishing an advert on a Facebook page which showed a black woman turning into a white woman. Graham's accused of racism with the online advertising campaign later admitted it, quote, missed the mark. The adverts showed a black woman removing her top to reveal a white woman underneath Supposedly after using Dove body lotion. And I, someone, one of my friends mentioned this and said that somewhere in the ad copy, it also said that the skin was, the product was good for normal to dark skin. And my answer to that was, look, I have, I have white as fuck skin and I'm here to tell you it is not normal. If I look out the window, it burns. <sighs> If I wear my Fitbit a little too tight, I break out in hives. I currently have two burning welts because I wore my Fitbit a little too tight the other day. I'm always itchy. I get hives if I lean on the corner of a table for too long. White skin is anything but fucking normal. I, I just... Did no one... Do you not have a single person... Of color, not not necessarily a, a black person, just anyone who is not, not fucking white working in your ad department could have told you. Or or just maybe here's another thing: a white person who's not a fucking idiot in your ad department. Because I'm pretty sure everybody in your ad department is probably white and also quite definitely a fucking idiot. And almost certainly the kind of people that say things like, oh, no, I'm colorblind. I don't see color. That sounds like an allergy problem. In some cases it is. In some cases it's just redhead skin. Redhead skin is bullshit. I, how, how, does, how does Dove keep doing this shit? And the sad part is all they had to do to, to not fuck this up was reverse the images. Mm. All I had to do was switch them. But why? Just it. I. Oh. Their message was because apparently the white lady then pulls off her shirt and turns into an Asian lady. And their message was the product is good for all different types of women. So all you had to do was switch the order. Yeah. And you could have made that message work. It would have been like the end of that Michael Jackson video. <laughs> God. <laughs> Fine. But no, you, you have to turn a black lady into a white lady. Who, who did? Who did? I just, I'm just, I'm picturing some people on set as this is happening, and they're like, "Oh no, oh, yeah. oh no!" Like, what are we, what are we doing here, guys? Oh no, <laughs> what? What's we the do? concept for this ad? This, this is oh, not. Oh. Uh, And 
they just, and the irony is they're trying so hard to put out these positive messages and the the double irony is they're trying so hard to put out these positive messages for women and then also sell you beauty products hmm. don't listen to the beauty industry buy our shit okay i mean that's a little weird it's a little weird for you to tell me not to listen to the beauty industry when you're part of it and you want me to buy your shampoo but oh sure but then to be like everybody's beautiful like they're trying so hard to have this like positive empowering message and they just keep fucking they it up keep fucking it up don't you think at some point you should maybe bring in somebody you need a new ad agency stuff? yeah like maybe some oversight is called for at this point what's peggy from mad men doing now she started her own agency get her on this shit <laughs> yeah but then she lost it when she became a handmaid oh yeah okay all right yeah. <laughs> god damn i guess i guess the first thing is if if you keep doing this shit if you keep putting out inadvertently putting out racist advertising, maybe you might want to check with getting a new advertising agency because yeah. the one you have is kind of racist. Maybe looking to asking people that aren't white what they think oh, sometimes. No, what? No, what? Like by like the fourth time, there's a lesson you should have learned by now and nobody feels bad for you. We've learned that apparently there are still milkmen in Ireland and yeah. they're very bad at their job and they're bored they're bored it's like the maytag repair man except you know he wouldn't come egg your house um we've learned that uh, apparently aliens are coming next next year to wyoming to wyoming at last thank god can, can... you know do you remember the old garfield cartoon show long ago yes sort of they proved that wyoming doesn't even exist garfield gave a monologue on why wyoming doesn't exist maybe the aliens have already come we've learned that um the smell of pumpkin spice brings fear and panic I, I wonder why. I get that way when I smell Dracar Noir. Yum. You know what Dracar, no Dracar Noir is? It was like the official cologne of the of the Long Island Guido in the 80s and 90s. I don't know. Maybe they don't make it anymore. I don't know. Okay. It's... I... The modern equivalent is probably Axe. Tara, it's me. I mean, it's me. Have, have you seen how I dress? It's me. Yeah, but you might have known dudes that wore it. If I knew dudes who were wearing it, I would not have, know. Do you have Guidos in Charleston? Maybe. But if I, I would have just smelled them and go, that smells like them, those dudes. I wouldn't know what the fuck it was called. I would just smell it and go, oh yeah, it smells like that guy. Fun fact, they do have Guidos in Ireland. I was fascinated to learn that. And I'm like, how do you have Guidos here? Everyone's Irish. How is that possible? But there are Irish Guidos. It's a state Very of strange. mind. It's a state of mind. Very strange. There's a there's a reality show about them. And the one guy, I was watching it at like two in the morning. <laughs> and the guy was like, yo, I like girls that are really tan. I don't really like pale girls. And I'm like, well, that's a problem for you. because You're really in Ireland. Ireland. Ain't nobody fucking tan in Ireland. Where's and I asked my cousins, I was like, do you, what do you call them here? Because like we call them Guidos. And they were like wankers we call them <laughs> i get that but like do you have a term for them like are they a niche group and they were just like we try not to think about them <laughs> okay sorry we've learned that uh maybe if you're giving your kids creative assignments um maybe don't get them thinking creatively about nazis yeah is is something you should try and finally we've learned Fast food workers are not paid enough for your bullshit. No, 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 no. 
not not at all you're 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 not they, they I, I guarantee you most of the people working at that store oh, have no fucking idea why you're losing your mind over this goddamn no. mcnugget sauce they don't care and they hate you hi hey hi, hello it's a peggy hey peggy hi everybody I, I don't know why mom's holding me. I don't like being held. It sucks. Still haven't, you. Gr still haven't okay. grown into those ears yet, huh? Mm -hmm. Still haven't grown into those ears yet, huh? Yes, she has. She's beautiful. Don't you listen to him. You're like the Beyonce <laughs> of cats. You're gorgeous. 